everyone experiences them. Those cringeworthy, unintentionally awkward moments that are unfortunately, well, another part of life. It is so true, mm -hmm. but the way you react to these situations can really help change the outcome. Yeah, joining us now is the founder of the Good Manners Group, Liz Aquino. Liz, now you've you've picked some situations for us that can definitely be embarrassing, like um, having food stuck in your teeth or noticing someone else has food in their teeth. What should you do? All right. Well, if you feel like you might have food stuck in your teeth, make a quick attempt to release it by subtly running your tongue over your teeth, followed by a quick attempt to dislodge the offending item by taking a sip of your drink. If that doesn't work, say to your table mates, excuse me, and go to the bathroom to remove the food from your teeth. No explanation needed before you leave the table or when you come back. Now, whether or not you mention food stuck in someone else's teeth depends on your relationship with that person. If it's a new acquaintance, a client or a potential client, or a high-ranking member of the business, church, or social community, I would act as if I don't notice it. But if it's a friend, family member, or colleague, say something like, I always like to know if there's something stuck in my teeth. I think there's something stuck in yours. And by phrasing it like that, mm -hmm. you're showing them that, hey, you've been there before. And by saying, I think there's something stuck in your teeth, it allows for some doubt. So it alleviates their fear that this object is so large that it can be visible by the latest Google Earth image. <laughs> I've gone about this all wrong because I like, I'm like, <laughs> I'll tell anyone you have something in and your it's teeth. It's huge. It's yeah. a huge piece no, of you're so much more tactful. <laughs> yeah. we, we appreciate <laughs> the guidance. Well, uh, yeah, if you don't know the person really well, it's just, you're just not sure how they'll take it if you, if you mention it. Oh, so sure. that's why hold back on those people. No, yeah. you're doing it the right way and <laughs> we should take your advice. All right, what if you um, accidentally burp? What do you do? Okay. I mean, because sometimes it just happens. Yeah. I know, I know. It does. If you feel a burp about to erupt, ball your hand into a fist, turn away from the people you're with, and burp into your fist, keeping your lips sealed to mute the sound. Then simply say, excuse me to the people around you, but no one person in particular. Now, if you're on the receiving end of someone else's burp, you want to lessen their embarrassment. So after they say, excuse me, just say certainly and go about your business as if it never happened. Okay. Oh, that's good. Well, David, yeah. you usually have your burp like right around 940. He has a burp every day, Liz. I can't believe she's he, revealing this on TV. <laughs> you got me earlier, David, so I have to. It is true. <laughs> it's like clockwork for me, Liz, yeah. and I don't know why, but yeah. All right, All right. Now I know what to do. <laughs> All right, so what, what do you do? How do you recover if you send someone like a wrong email or a text message that wasn't meant for them? Okay, well, sometimes the best advice is the hardest path to take, and this is one of those situations. <laughs> you need to own it and apologize for it. If it wasn't a hurtful text or email, then it's fine to use humor or self-deprecation when you're addressing the issue. But if you are being critical of the person who received that message, then you should really call them or speak to them in person. The goal is you want them to hear in your voice the sincerity of your apology. And though it may seem like a lot of work, you also need to get in contact with anybody who may be impacted by your message. Mm -hmm. So anybody else mentioned in the message as well as the intended recipient of that message um, that just makes sure everyone's on the same page so there's no confusion or hurt down the road. It's so yeah, true. And good. it's so easy to do to, sure to write yeah. something or even get confused. Not that you're writing about people all the time, but if you do write about them and then you, you select to send it to them yeah. because you're not thinking. Like, oh, oh no. my gosh, it's the worst. It is. It is. It happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. All right, Liz all Aquino, right. thank you so much. We really appreciate your advice as always. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great tips. All right, Liz Aquina is a regular contributor, and you can find her right here on PTL each month. Good advice. Absolutely. Yeah.